seems incredible that it's only a year since we were filming at Farnber International's Conference and Exhibition Centre for the very first Global Urban Air Summit, which brought manufacturers of some of the 150 or so platforms then being designed and built. We saw regulators such as the FAA, EASA and the UK Civil Aviation Authority, and we met companies that were building the infrastructure that will surround this new form of transportation. And of course, there were the consultants and the thought leaders that are imagineering the big picture and putting a stamp of reality onto the dreams of this new industry. In July, of course, we saw the virtual second GUAS event, which was part of the Farnborough Connect. And already plans are in the making for the third summit, which hopefully we will see for real again at Farnborough. Well, I'm joined now by Robbie Burke, who's from the strategy advisors and management consultants, Oliver Wyman. Now, Robbie led discussions at the virtual Farnborough Connect on the whole global air mobility scene and has a pretty good eye on the progress. Robbie, welcome to the programme. So much seems to be progressing since that event just a year ago. So how do you see it? Yeah, thanks, Alan. It's interesting. You know, a year ago at GUAS, we were talking a lot about technology, right? vehicle technology, and I, I feel it's really moved on. Real things are happening now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of flight testing that we're seeing. Countless number of vehicle uh, designs are now happening. Um, uh, so I think it's getting really exciting. Uh, although I think now the picture is starting to change, the focus is starting to change into things like airspace management, infrastructure, and the true business models that are actually going to make the UAM and EV toll, you know, viable. Um, however, I would say things like cargo UAM starting to really operationalize now, starting to really see some good use cases coming through, are going to, you know, provide some leading light for us. So very exciting times, I think. And even since um, the virtual event just uh, in July, we're seeing other things coming through. We've seen vertical uh, aerospace in the UK with, um, their, their new UAM contender. Um, and of course, there's the Japanese that have been out last week. And um, we're talking about Pipstrel bringing out a cargo carrier. I mean, it really is quite exciting. But how, there's so many platforms. How many of them do you think are going to make it across the line? But I, I think to talk about the UAM market as being fragmented is, uh, is an understatement. You know, there's now thousands of different uh, models that kind of fall into this category. Look, ultimately, uh, business reality will hit at some point uh, and not all are going to survive. I don't expect in five and ten years time we'll be talking about that volume. You know, there are some clearly big players who have significant investment capital in, but there's also lots of startups that are really driving uh, the innovation. And what I find quite interesting at the moment is that it's those smaller players that are really pushing us at breakneck speed. But one thing I can say for certain is there will be consolidation and I think it'll be significant. And I think what you might find is that actually in, in the future in 10, 15, 20 years time, that actually the, the, the platform or, or the, the, the industry picture looks a bit more similar to maybe the automotive market or maybe the helicopter market where there are you know, global players um, significant players that have brought in lots of platforms under their umbrella. Now, one of the interesting points, as I see it, is, that, I mean, apart from the funding and how we do all this, is, is actually developing the infrastructure that we're going to need if this inner city business is, is going to work. People have got to spend rather a lot of money on there, putting in the air taxi ports on the roofs of buildings and so on, and, and that whole safety issue above our streets. Yeah, well, let's, let's start on this one with, with the need, right? The business case. The business case has got, to, uh, has got to be clear and has got to be scalable in order for investment capital to come in. But I think the demand drivers are still there and they're still really strong. So when it comes to that, I, I think it, it is that demand driver the government policy that will drive uh, some investment in infrastructure. But I think before we even get there, right, the business case for urban air mobility at, at, a, at a manufacturer level and an operator level has also got to work. Uh, when you start to get into autonomy, um, when you start to drive social acceptance to a level where actually, you know, it's what we do, right? It's day-to-day, it's -day. We, we get in our air taxi, 
uh, and, and off we fly. I think that narrative has got to start to play in order for, uh, for, for, for that sort of investment to flow through. So there is somewhat of a chicken and egg here. Um, and, and I know it's kind of, you know, never, never let the, uh, uh, you know, ne never let a practical decision uh, get in the way of good innovation. Um, but I think at the, very soon governments are going to have to start to get involved from an infrastructure point of view, not least planning on Verti ports on the top of buildings in London. Now, interestingly, we, we see around the world a lot of small regional towns, municipality airports and so on that are not used as much as they could be and a lot of being converted to housing. Um, but it looks to me like we're seeing the environmental benefits that we're getting from UAM extending beyond the inner cities into a regional area. I mean, in recent weeks, we've seen um, the hybrid electric plans for regional aircraft, um, and they look like they're going to happen. Do you see that tying in with that whole UAM strategy? I think, look, I think, you know, my design background is, is one that I'm kind of pretty proud of. So I, I suppose what I've always kind of noticed is that technology test beds have always provided kind of inspiration across industry, but also across different platforms. So I think the technology acceleration in UAM, you know, will help regional. I think also the technology acceleration in, uh, in commercial aviation will play back. And then, of course, we, we look at technology development within defense uh, that, that plays back. And we, we see this across industry. So, so I, I think these, uh, these different platforms, UAM, regional aircraft, and, and commercial and defense, can all be technology test beds where they learn from each other and push innovation across, ac across the different areas. So, so as we look forward to the Global Air Summit uh, number three, and um, what do we expect to see? What do you expect to see when we get this year ahead? I, I think we're going to have a lot of testing data. At least the, the individual manufacturers uh, will have a lot of testing data on EV tolls in the coming year. And um, I think there'll be a lot that are pushing hard towards certification. And, um, you know, question as to whether, whether many get over the line on that, that particular ticket um, for EV tolls. But I'm also watching really closely the cargo UAM market because in many cases there's been some really strong globalized right across the globe um, uh, use cases in, in in operationalizing so actually seeing that airspace management piece really start to come come through as they start to scale uh, and you'll have heard the the you know an, an, a number of the manufacturers talk about you know crawl walk run I'm kind of starting to sense that we're heading towards the walk phase in some of those cargo UAM use cases and that's just really getting exciting because when we get those data points, we're then able to really understand what does airspace management, what does infrastructure management look like? And, and frankly, what does the business case really come out to be so that we can take these brilliant vehicles that we're, we're de designing, manufacturing and testing now and actually put them in disguise with passengers on board. Thank you, Robbie. Well, you can see a lot more about the global urban air mobility and see some of those sessions from the Farnborough Connect and go to our website, wearefin.com. Thank you for watching.